Welcome to the second training module from Diversity on Infection Prevention. My name is Claire Kosavi. I'm the European Infection Prevention Application Expert within Europe. And today we're going to talk about the European norms and the efficacy. So in a few seconds, you will see the presentation. So let's start. As I said, today we're going to talk about the EN norms and the efficacy. And just a little bit about myself, I have a doctorate degree in microbiology and molecular biology. I'm responsible for the full range of professional level disinfectant for our infection prevention portfolio. I provide experts in microbiology consultation on application and European norms and standards. I also present at diverse infection prevention events and conference, and I deliver training pro program for our sales technical manager and application specialist at the European level. So today, the training module is about the EN efficacy testing, and let's jump in. So first of all, what are disinfection tests? So in order to claim a chemical is a disinfectant, you must prove it. Therefore, disinfectant efficacy tests are used to determine if a chemical can kill a microorganism, and hence whether it can be called a disinfectant. So what's the definition of efficacy? So efficacy defined as effectiveness or the ability to achieve a desired effect. But why do we need disinfection tests? So to prove that a disinfectant can kill a microorganism, to determine the right concentration of a disinfectant required to kill a microorganism, to determine the contact time of a disinfectant required to kill a microorganism, to determine a disinfectant's efficacy under its desired application condition, and also for disinfectant approval and registration, which are required by every country in the world in which you would like to sell your disinfectant. So a bit of a history about disinfection tests. In the past, there was many different disinfection tests and standards, each supported by different countries in Europe. So you had the British standard in the UK, AFNOR in France, DVG or ARCA in Germany, and many more. So some of them already uh, still exist. However, there was no harmonization between countries, which makes the comparison uh, difficult. So then the CEN was created, so it's the European Committee for Standardization. And the goal of the CEN is to have a standardized set of disinfection tests for Europe. So what are the European standards? So they describe a disinfectant based on its antimicrobial effectiveness and its application. It compares the product against a number of reference strains and conditions. So in the case of bactericidal, so if you want a product to claim bactericidal, you need to have to test it against reference bacteria, such as E. coli, Staphylococcus aureus, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and Enterococcus ERA. So those four reference bacteria have been selected um, because they are the hardest to kill um, by disinfectants. So they have been selected with years of testing in laboratories, and they are the harder to kill. Then we have for the yeast disicidal claim, Candida albicans. So Candida albicans is the reference yeast that you must test if you want to claim yeast disicidal with your disinfectant. Then we have application areas. So there are many different application areas. However, we're going to focus on two main application areas. So the first one is VD, which means food, industrial, domestic, and institutional. So they are applicable to chemical disinfectant to be used in processing, distribution, and retailers of food of animal or vegetable origin. But it is also applicable to product for all public areas where disinfection is not medically indicated. For example, homes, catering, schools, nurseries, transport, hotel, office, and product used in packaging. The second application areas of interest for diversity is medical. So 
It is applicable to chemical disinfectant to be used in areas and situations where disinfection is medically indicated. So such indication occurs, for example, in patient care, in hospital, in community medical facilities, dental institution, clinic of schools, kindergarten, nursing home, and may also occur in a workplace and in the home. It may also include services such as laundry and kitchen supplying product directly for the patient. So what are the viable in the test? So we have talked about already the application, whether it's PD or medical, but then we have also other important variable um, in the test. So the microorganism, of course, depending on whether you want to show bactericidal, fungicidal, sporicidal, mycobactericidal, or virucidal activity of your product. So as we said before, there are representative species that have been taken as chosen and taking into account their relative resistance to disinfection. So those are the ones that as a manufacturer of disinfectant, we must test. The second variable is the product concentration. So usually in an external laboratory, we will test three different product concentration and then we will repeat um, testing. So normally you will expect to see a pass fail, but at least one concentration needs to pass and one concentration fail. Then we have the contact time. So contact time can vary from 30 seconds to 60 minutes, depending on the test. But you have to ensure that the surface stays wet. So the contact time must be realistic. Temperature, usually around 20 degrees. Water hardness is also a variable. And then the interfering substance. So the interfering substance or called as well the soiling condition. So the interfering substance is bovine albumin. So it's the one commonly used as a soil in this test. But other sources can be tested depending of the industry and the application area. So in our case, two conditions are possible. So you will have the clean condition. So that means low level of soiling simulating the product use and the clean condition where a surface will normally be clean before the use of the product. So clean condition means that a pre-cleaning step was done. And if you test your product only in clean condition, that means you can claim only that your product is a disinfectant. So it's a two-step process. The second condition, called dirty condition or high level of soil, is really simulating the product when it's used under dirty condition where surface required no pre-cleaning before use of the product. So in dirty condition, if there is visible soil, this will still need to be pre-cleaned. But dirty condition really means that a visible clean surface or one with minimum soil. So if you test your disinfectant under dirty condition, that means that you can claim that your product is a cleaner disinfectant. So it is a one-step process. You do not need to have an initial cleaning step. You can just clean and disinfect in one step, like our Oxyver product. But we will talk to that in a separate training module. The European norm structure. So there are three distinct phases. However, the two most important um, are related to the claim of your disinfectant. So we'll have the suspension test. For example, when you use your product in, in bucket application, but then we'll have a second important test. They are the surface or carrier test. And then we already discussed about the two main application areas, so the VD and the medical area. But then how do we know that our product actually passed the test. So this is all about the log kiln. So the log kiln is the log number of the initial microorganism minus the local number of the survivor after you have used your product. So then it's the initial bacteria counts minus after the percentage of the reduction. And usually in infection prevention, the most common log kills in EN tests are three, four, and five. So it will highly depends on which type of test. 
So whether it's a sporocytal test, a bacteria test, whether it is a suspension test. So here you have the variable. So as I said, it will depend on the microorganism, the type of test, whether it is a suspension or a surface carrier test. And for which areas? Is it for medical area or is it for VD area? But let's deep dive a little bit more in the virucidal claim. So the virucidal efficacy in PD and medical areas. So it's a bit uh, particular because you have three levels of virucidal claim. So the first level on the right side is the virucidal activity against enveloped virus only. So we have seen in the first training module about microbiology that enveloped viruses are easy to kill by disinfection. Then we have the second level of virucidal activity, which you can get when you test murinovirus and adenovirus. And that means that you are effective against envelope virus, but additionally, murinovirus and adenovirus. That's it. And then the third level of virucidal efficacy, when you test your product against murinovirus, adenovirus, and poliovirus, that means that the product is effective against all non-enveloped viruses and envelope viruses. So in the case of the coronaviruses, all product with either virucidal activity against envelope virus, limited or full virucidal activity, all those three claims are effective against coronaviruses. And as I said, Vaccinia virus is the reference viruses for the envelope virus. So this is Vaccinia virus that you must test if you want to get the claim only on envelope virus. And that includes, of course, viruses like influenza and coronaviruses. So we really need to understand the virucidal efficacy. So the most well-known um, EN norms for viruses, it's the EN 14476. It's a suspension test and it covers the enveloped and the non-enveloped. And then most recently, the EN 16777 appears. It's a carrier or called surface test and also covering enveloped and unenveloped viruses. But it is important uh, to understand what you can claim when we talked about virucidal efficacy. So this just summarizes what we've discussed before. So for PD2 and PD1, we'll have a training module on BPR, but just to give you some information that indeed it is important to differentiate the three types of claim. So enveloped uh, viruses, the limited virucidal claim, and the full virucidal claim. And for the PD4, it's either you don't have efficacy against uh, viruses or you get, you must have the full virucidal efficacy. So some example of how the EN norms are evolving and what's, what's the future. So in before 2020, there was no medical test for bacteria, only food tests for feedy uh, area. But also the same for, uh, for the yeast. There was no carrier medical tests, only a food um, test. And now there's a draft for the bacteria carrier medical test, the same for the yeast. If we look for fungi, a bit the same scenarios. Before, there was no surface test for medical area, only for VD. But now there's a draft um, available and we are expecting uh, that it will be soon uh, published. And also for patient area, there's a maximum contact time of 15 minutes. Viruses as well. So in the past, we only had a suspension test, but most recently um, they have also added a carrier test. So the Indian test testing process, so it, internal testing is a very good way to screen and assess the efficacy of a product. However, we, at Diversity, we always perform external testing from an accredited laboratory, and it is also mandatory for registration purposes. And when you want to update or add a claim, there are several rules depending on the country. 
So it is important to understand the claims a certain product can make. And I really recommend you to ask your supplier for detailed information and documentation about the claims they are making. So I would like to thank you for your attention. This was the second training module on EN testing of the Infection Prevention Diversity Series. I really suggest that if you have any question, you can contact your diversity uh, reference. And um, I would be really happy um, to have you on board on our third training module, where we will talk about CE marking. And thank you for your attention.